Hello everybody and welcome to another speedrun tutorial, this time on Resident Evil 2 Remake. As you can see there's a little bit of chaos happening on the screen, this is obviously not the uh, the run because RNG can sometimes be against your favor and in, uh, in that case with Mr. X, a uh, liquor and a uh, zombie it was a little bit chaotic. But if you've never seen any of these before, what I like to do is uh, give you guys a little bit of a walkthrough on exactly how I get through games quickly so that you guys can try it for yourselves. And uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get into a little bit of the details of how this game is run, but one that I want to note really quickly, you'll see if you look at my splits on the top right, uh, the times that I use to compare against my best times, and the 60 FPS at the top, I am playing this game on PC, but I decided to limit the frames to 60 frames per second instead of a, another category that is 120 frames per second. And the reason for that can simply be put as the damage of the knife is tied to higher frame rates and will do more damage on higher frame rates. I wanted to make this as accessible as possible, so I'm running this on PC at 60 frames per second with a controller. Um, so I'll be doing less damage with the knife, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. So one thing to note is that this game speedrun community runs on in-game time and in Resident Evil you get a uh, score and in-game time at the end of the game. I'm running my splits on real time so uh, just note that there is that difference. So one thing you're going to notice very quickly as we look, go into the gas station with Leon is I'm going to try as much as I can to take very clean lines and when I say clean lines what I mean is you want to move as straight as you possibly can. Uh, also, you want to turn and not let this happen to you. Don't get shot by the zombie. Don't be me. Don't have terrible aim. Don't be too slow. Uh, you want to go there, you want to grab the key, and you want a quick turn, which uh, is... Anyone familiar with the game should know how to quick turn. You quick turn and you want to go and then wait for the zombie to come around the corner or look at him as he comes around the corner, however you can get it to work for you and you want to shoot him in the head because otherwise you get bit and that costs you about five seconds or so in the very beginning of the run. Um, speedrunners notoriously say this is one of the most reset heavy places in the game and that's because if you're competing for world records you're not going to want to get bit by that zombie. But we're fine. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a god gamer with a god time so we're, we're okay. So once you get to Raccoon City, skipping through all the cutscenes which won't count against your in-game time just to note, um, you skip through all the cutscenes as you will you want a quick turn and then you're going to head as you see. I'm trying to keep myself positioned as close as I can to the walls and take the shortest path possible to where I'm going. But what you notice what I'm doing right now is aiming like a weirdo as I'm going up the stairs. That is one of the few actual bits of tech in this run that we'll be using. It's called stair skating. And what it does is if you aim in a certain rhythm, it is not just spamming the button, but if you aim in a certain rhythm, Basically what you want to do is stop Leon from ever going into the walking animation of going up or down stairs. If you do this, he'll keep his full speed. So you'll see right there I do it just a little bit. Um, it's something that you'll get down. What you want to do is basically start aiming at the very moment Leon would start his walking animation on the stairs. Um, so you'll, you'll get it down, don't worry. But as you go into RPD, you're going to pull the lever and then we're going to walk over here. Again, trying to take um, as clean of straight lines as I possibly can. You'll notice that I actually turn my camera a bit before I start turning Leon's character as much as I can to try to prepare him to take the best cuts possible. There are things called uh, called quick turns, uh, but I never really got into that tech because I don't think it's necessary to get a really good time in this game. Um, the world record for the route I'm running is about 54 minutes, um, and my goal was to get sub one hour, so that's, that's what we're trying to do here, beat the game in under one hour. So you want to grab the book from that guy, and then we're going to pause here. The reason we pause here is because that zombie right there is the only zombie in the game as far as I know that runs on a real timer, meaning if we pause the game, he actually continues his animation to move through that door, uh, which just saves us a little bit of time, so just pause three seconds and then wait. Note for those two zombies right there, you want to make sure that you're hugging that right wall uh, because then you'll just walk right past them and then you can cut left and you'll be perfect. So now we're going to talk to Marvin for the only time of the run, uh, shame because I love Marvin, but... I'm going to get the knife from him, go quickly over to here and cut this box, and we're going to head our way through reception. But one thing I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to throw away the key, because we don't need it anymore, and I'm going to move the gun over to the fourth slot. The way you manage your inventory is entirely up to you, but inventory management in Resident Evil is, is important in a normal playthrough, but even more so here, because we're not going to be using the box at all. 
So we want to be careful about that. Now, coming through this hallway, make sure you hug this wall right here because that body is intended to drop on you as a little spooky scare. But if you hug the wall, like run into it with Leon's character as you're moving forward, you'll just pass right by it, which, you, which is what we want. So we're just going to be cutting these corners as best I can. My movement watching it back is is really not perfect. This Optimizing the speedrun truly does come down to uh, optimizing your walking because a lot of the speedrun is walking. Um, but I have to admit, that is what makes the speedrun so accessible. A lot of this is based on memorization and not necessarily execution of certain tech other than in boss fights and things like that, which of course I really love. Um, so stair skate as best you can here, and then you're going to want to shoot the zombie in the head because if you don't, he's going to grab you. Getting grabbed is one of the biggest time losses you'll get. You will get grabbed. It will happen as you're learning this run, and it's okay. You'll slowly get better, and that's all you really need. Um, there's healing in certain spots that you'll be able to figure out as you're moving through the game, and you'll want that um, it, it, periodically because... I would like to note that, uh, first of all here, try to aim right before this talk with Marvin. It actually lets you move a little bit faster when you're talking to him at the start. It's a tiny ass time save, but this is a speed run. Um, so yeah, I, w I wouldn't worry too much about, um, you know, being, being too perfect at the start. Uh, gotta watch out for, I think is the community calls her Eleanor here. I decided not to shoot her and tried to YOLO it and go past. I really should have shot her in the head. Um, yeah, you, you want to be doing that. Another thing to note about inventory management is the spade key being in my top slot allows me to just spam the X button. You want to try to keep things that are important at the top of your inventory or at least in slot one, two or two, one. Um, yeah, you want to get fast at these puzzles, but I'm terrible at them. Uh, I'll definitely have my notes down in the description so you guys can have like a shorthand answers to all the puzzles. Um, I, as if you look at the top, this is my 21st run of the game. So it didn't take me too long to get to the point where I really wanted to. Um, but that meant that I hadn't memorized things. So here's an example right here. I got bit by the zombie. I didn't want to get into caution. So I knew this was here. Um, there's actually another one coming up around the corner here. So I just try to keep myself healed. The reason I'm looking at the window here is that chopper actually knocks you backward. If you look um, and aim at the right time, you can actually knock yourself forward, which is nice. Go out on the stairs, you're going to get the cutscene, and then we want to grab the pliers. And as you see, I'm actually going to put them over the key. And the reason I do that is because, like I said, this will give me the opportunity to just mash X as we quickly go through these two doors that need the pliers, um, which, which, which is nice. It's ideal. And it also moves the spade key out of the way because we don't need the spade key anymore. Um, so we're going to go through here and uh, hit this. Sometimes this door is a little weird. It doesn't let you interact right away. I, I never really figured out why, um, but yeah, strange. This is actually the first thing that I do that I would consider a safety strat. I'm grabbing an extra flashbang and we'll talk about uh, why later. You want to get the valve here, then get a quick turn and get the fuse because we're going to need that to exit this area. Go here and uh, pull this and then we're going to go put the fuse in and then we're going to go back to the main area. I want to take a quick moment to note Leon's movement in different health ranges. When he is fine, he moves at his normal speed. Oh god, I forgot. Uh, that that's a stream meme. Don't worry about it. Don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll you'll have to come to stream to find out what that's about. Anyway, um, so when Leon is in fine, he moves normal. When he's in caution, he also moves at the same speed, but he moves sli slightly slower upstairs, I believe. When he's in danger, he moves a lot slower. Um, be careful to move exactly the way I did there kind of just walking toward that pillar and then cutting then watch the zombie here Because he is he will be in random spots in that hallway and you'll need to shoot him sometimes But yeah, so be be aware of Leon being in danger means he's slower So now as you can see we're gonna throw the pliers away because we don't need them anymore We're grabbing the bomb and then we're gonna grab another flashbang uh, I should talk a little bit about zombie RNG. It's the thing that will be the most difficult in these runs. Zombies are in random locations. Like, he can actually not be there entirely. That that fat guy looking at me. But if he was turned toward me, I might have needed to shoot him because he could have uh, came and bitten me. And as I mentioned, getting grabbed is not ideal for two reasons. One, the animation is long and waste your time. Use the valve right here in this room. And then uh, the second reason is you have to grab healing if you want to keep Leon at top speed eventually. Um, and that can be a bit frustrating. It's actually crazy because in Claire's run, she moves faster in caution. Uh, and I think I'm going to do Claire's run and do a tutorial for it too because I really love Claire's route as well. So uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. So grab the battery from the star's office or uh, and put it in the bomb. Here, there is a liquor behind you. The um, big speedrunners for the game have mentioned that if you look at the liquors, their AI actually makes them less aggressive. Because um, you don't want that to happen. As you can see, I'm very displeased. 
Uh, but in my experience, generally, they didn't hit me too much as it was, or it seemed to generally be random. I would say out of maybe 10 runs, that liquor hit me maybe two times. So I just didn't really get fussed about it. Uh, if I was going for better times, maybe I would, but panning the camera behind you can be a bit annoying. Anyway, you want to solve the unicorn puzzle there, and then we're going to push this bookcase over. Typically, I haven't had to deal with any zombies here, so that's that's pretty no pretty pretty nice. I was going to say noise. Is noise a thing anymore? I, I don't know. Anyway, go through this door. We're uh, not going to run into the bookcase there like dum-dums, and then we're going to grab the hip pouch for a little bit of extra space, and then we're going to place a bomb. Uh, usually, quick turn there. I guess I just didn't because I'm lazy, but we go back out of this door, and this is a cool little tech you can use in any run, and then push back through. If the door is open while this explodes, normally a bookcase falls over there and blocks you from the room, and then there's a zombie and a liquor uh, for you to deal with before you exit, and you have to hold it and move it like the thing we did in the beginning of the game. Uh, if you do that with the door, that bookcase actually will not fall over. So you'll see to the left here, there's a liquor that falls over um, to the left. I guess I didn't see him too much on the camera, but that's going to let us just go right back through the door. We're going to go down this ladder. This ladder can be a bit spooky. Zombies will come over to you, but what can be really nice is often they will do their grab animations while you're coming down on the ladder, which you have invincibility frames for, so they won't be able to grab you, uh, which is nice. And now we are, uh, we, we have everything we need. We're going to go on and phase G1. Remembering to stair skate. You can see, uh, as you might have seen, on if you slow, go back and slow it down, you'll see on the third time I aimed there, Leon started stepping a little bit. That's the rhythm you want to avoid. You want Leon to never be stepping on the stairs, stay slightly ahead of that. But if you click it too fast, you're just going to be jerking Leon backward and not moving at top speed. So it takes a little while to get. I'm, I'm still not even perfect at it after 21 runs, but I definitely did get better at it, which was nice. Um, so yeah, we go and put all the medallions in, uh, we're gonna go down and fight G1, and even though we're not on the higher frame rates, we're gonna fight G1 with the knife. Um, so to give a little bit more context on that as we walk to G1, because it's pretty straightforward, the way I essentially understand it works is when you're at 60 frames, the damage registration for the knife essentially is 6 points of hitting with the knife. On 30 frames, it's 3 points of hitting with the knife. On 120 frames, it's 12 points of hitting with the knife. So, uh, I may be wrong on the calculation, but just take it as the knife on 120 FPS on PC does double damage, which makes the fight go a hell of a lot faster, which is nice, especially in the Claire run when you're, uh, you're, you're in caution. Because as you can see, Birkin's gonna bitch slap me here, and uh, I don't appreciate that. This definitely was not ideal. The ideal that you want is you kind of rotate around him a little bit and stay at least uh, what I did generally on his hip, uh, his or sorry, his hip, uh, his right hip, your left, and that generally kept me safe. But the thing was, it was dependent on damage because what you really wanted was him to turn into this phase quicker, and you want him to go into this phase where he gets knocked down. At this point, the fight is over. You want to be trying to slash through the eye as much as possible, but. Yeah, I get grabbed there, so that's really not ideal because now I believe, I, I didn't watch, but after getting hit and grabbed, I believe I'm in danger? I'm not sure, actually. I feel like Leon doesn't look like he's in danger, um, which obviously wouldn't be ideal because, like I said, you move slower, but also you don't want to uh, to walk slow. But yeah, to give a little bit of context for why 120 frames was specifically chosen for what I guess would be the most popular Leon route outside of doing it on console... Uh, is the community essentially didn't want the game to be pay to win, meaning to get the fastest time, you needed to have a PC and a PC that could run 120 frames. So they specifically, cho or more than 120, so they specifically chose 120. Because in theory, uh, I call this the pussy pouch, we're gonna grab that really quick, because uh, you don't actually need that, but it lets you grab healing items later without fucking your inventory, so that's nice. Um, anyway. So yeah, the uh, community side of 120 because in theory, the knife can do 20 hits per hit if you have 200 frames or 25 if you have 250 frames, but obviously not everyone has a computer that can run this game at 250 frames. So you don't, you never want to make things pay to win essentially. Um, and for me, it was very important. Like I said, I do these for fun. I'm not going for records. I just like speedrunning, and I think it's a really fun way to challenge and add a little replayability to a game you really love and want to learn the ins and outs of. Um, and then that's kind of what this run is, to be honest. This run is very much um, learning how to, uh, or, or memorizing everything, really. Optimizing your movement, memorizing everything, hitting your shots well, um, and really running enough that zombies are in nice spots that don't completely 
uh, screw you over. Um, but yeah, I actually honestly think this is one of the most accessible runs I've ever done. It only took me 20 to, I guess this, or this is 21 to get the time I wanted. Um, and I, and I, I think I could get it down a lot more if I continue to run, but I'll probably move on to Claire now. Um, th the only reason I'm not really mentioning what I'm doing here is this is a decent part of the run. It really is just memorizing where to go. And like I said, that'll all be in detail and maybe less detail down in the notes in the description. So you guys can figure it out in tandem with the video. Um, so we're, we're are walking here to go use the valve. And uh, what we're coming back for is to grab an electronic part and turn on the power so that we can go to the uh, next area we need to go to to get the other electric part. Because essentially our goal right now is to get that parking permit and to do so we need to solve the electronic puzzle. If you're familiar with the game, you know kind of the progression that we uh, we need to do. So the first goal is get the medallions. Now we're trying to get the parking permit. Um, so after we come over here, we're gonna turn this on. The solution to this is always the same. It's always uh, three and four are turned on. So don't turn on one like a dingus like I did. Uh, and then once the power turns on, all the dogs are released. There is a popular meme, uh, I, I, don't, I think it started at GDQ, but I'm not entirely sure, that dogs are free. Meaning, dogs really don't hit you very often. There are a couple places, like in front of this door, sometimes that dog will bite. Um, it can happen every now and again, but the most important thing is remembering where to go here. If you notice there, I didn't turn left immediately when I exited the door. I forgot that it was left out of that door. It really just is repetition, because you don't want to be here too long. This is actually a point where you see I walk, or sorry, diagonal there. Usually that will let you dodge the dog. In this case, that didn't let me dodge the dog. So it can be a little bit random, but generally going over and then walking a straight line to that door, you can even follow the line that's on the ground will let you avoid it. I went a little bit too far right and maybe that baited the dog over. Um, following the line to the door generally seems safe in my experience. So as I mentioned here, you might be able to tell Leon is moving a little bit slower. I can't overemphasize, this seems to add up significantly over the course of the run, so you really, if he's ever in danger, your first priority should be finding some sort of healing. For me, this is unfortunately a part of the run where there is not a lot of healing just sitting there, so I decided, you know what, screw it, I know some is coming up relatively soon, It's not. it doesn't make sense to go out of my way to get it. Um, so you want to get the part there. This is actually the flashbang I grabbed for safety. This next area can be really annoying because there's two zombies right here, right around a corner. Um, we put the fuse in that I just grabbed. Uh, and then we want to shoot the one in here in the head. I do that so specifically so he doesn't grab my feet. Um, it, those two zombies can be very annoying. There is a way to juke through them and actually shoot them after putting in the part. But it's, it, it is a little scary. And I think grabbing the extra flash really doesn't take much time. And it makes it uh, less scary to do. So I remember here that there's healing. Uh, and I unequip my flashbang like a smart person. Uh, but I go to use the herb, and that should put me in caution, and then I'm going to turn in here, and remember, oops, I ate that herb earlier after I gra got grabbed in the library, so there is no herb there. But you can tell um, that I remember where they are, and I'm essentially choosing places along my path that I know, okay, fuck, I got hit, like, you know, that's not ideal, but... You know, I know where the healing is and we'll make the best of the situation. As long as I'm in caution, it's not ideal because Leon, like I said, I think he moves slightly slower up the stairs, uh, but he doesn't move slower when he's just walking around. So it's not the end of the world. The only reason it's obviously a little uh, spooky, uh, make sure you grab the gear, is because you don't want him to get bitten and then go into danger to be slower again when you don't have healing available. Uh, another safety strat I do is grabbing a flash here because there are another two zombies coming up that are, uh, they're safer to make it through, I would say, than the ones at the fuse, but they're still a little bit spooky. Um, so yeah, we're grabbing the gear because we're going to need to get to the clock tower, but before we do that, we need to pass uh, this area. Going to go down here and, uh, yeah, you can see I walked a little bit there, so again, spacing for stair skating. We're going to pull this lever uh, and then you can throw the flash before the lever, after the lever. I don't really know what's faster. Probably throwing before. Um... I get my fingers crossed sometimes on the controls for throwing shit. Something about holding L2 to uh, to aim and R2 to shoot and then holding L1 to use a secondary item and pressing R2 to use it is weird for me. I kind of feel like R1 should be the thing to throw secondary items, but I guess that depends on the control scheme you're running. Um, I'm doing type C and I have things like aim assist off. I have my sensitivity up almost all the way. Um, that's entirely up to you and you know how you feel like you, you do best. I feel like having camera movement be pretty fluid is important though. But the zombie stays stunned the whole time. You grab the clover key. And then we're going to see Mr. X. And he's going to lift the helicopter, aim at his titties, and 
If you wait until he punches like that, if you hold yourself right on the wall, aim at his tatas, and then wait until he moves, you can move forward and to the left. I emphasize more forward than left because you don't want to move straight to the left. You want to move forward as well because you'll just move right past him. It's important that you wait until he moves though because if you don't, he will just stare at you and watch you as you start moving forward, not even move, and then punch you. So it is very, very important to make sure he's moving first. Um, anyway, as I go through there, I know that I can grab a, another herb. And then we're going to go to the area where we started this video. And I got fucked up before. Very nice. So we're going to grab the ammo right there. Uh, we do need it. Uh, we want to look up and shoot this liquor. The reason we do that is because that will cause him to go to the other side of the room when we exit this room. And that is ideal because we obviously don't want what happened in the beginning of this video to happen. Uh, we go in here. We're going to discard the crank because we don't need it anymore. We're going to grab the jack because we need to go to the library to get to the clock tower. Try to quick turn and get out of here as quickly as you can because, as you can see, there's a zombie rising up right there. We need to get around him. Um, is, is this the run where I get thrown by Mr. X? It is. Watch. Okay. I'll note what I did there while he tosses me and I rage because uh, he reached through time and space to get me. So, the easiest way I've found to dodge Mr. X is to wait until he comes near you, aim at his side, and it's, you move forward until the moment you aim, and once you start aiming, move backward. There are videos on YouTube if you look up speedrun dodge Mr. X, it will help you uh, more with that. So the reason we shoot outside the door there is because that is actually going to aggro the zombies in the room uh, and manipulate Mr. X to go toward that shot, which is what we want. Uh, because it'll give us enough time to push these bookcases and generally not get bitten. I don't believe I get bitten here. It has happened before, but it is pretty rare. I don't even really bother to look backward because it's just... It, it was so rare that I never really worried about it. And at a certain point, I kind of accept that RNG is a factor in this run. RNG being random number generator, which doesn't exactly mean what we say it means. Basically, it means random things happen and it can screw you over sometimes. But that's the nature of a speed run. The game was not made to be run as fast as possible. The game was meant to be taken at a pace where you were using your resources effectively and surviving. So that's the fun of speed running, though. You got to work against those constraints and each run is different. Um, so you hope that you can get the best time that you can based on your skill and working through the uh, level of luck that you get. Anyway, we're going to want to put in the gear there. Make sure that you grab the gear after you put it in because we're going to need it for the uh, thing up here. You're going to go in here and you'll grab the small gear and then you're going to put the large gear right back in. And then we'll go back downstairs and we'll put the small, uh, the small gear in something that we passed, which will allow us to get the other electric part, which will allow us to go return to the parking garage. Um, for me in my first playthrough, I think all of this took about two and a half hours and we're about 22 minutes r real time into this. So things are going pretty swimmingly. I mean, granted, I watch cutscenes, but I don't even think that was part of. Uh... Yeah, no, I'm thinking like my in-game time. Uh, which you can you can see at any time, by the way, if you pause the screen, and pausing the screen does it. Now, you just saw Mr. X walking in there. Sometimes he can be coming your way. I got unlucky as fuck because he happened to go in the library like, I'm just going to go look for this guy. And he's like, excuse me, I'd love to open the door for you. And then he just stands in the way. <laughs> and I don't, like, that punch is beside me. My Mr. I, I hate that my Mr. X, and you do want to do this, by the way. You want to exit the room and fall through because it's the fastest way to get out. I hate that my Mr. X uh, was so bad uh, because I wish I could show more of how to dodge him. That zombie's usually not there, by the way, but uh, I single tapped him, so th there's some good luck, even though we just need to stun him. I guess that's a good thing to note. Um, you can stun zombies by most zombies. Sometimes not. Most of the time, you can stun zombies by shooting them in the head once and then just walking by in a pinch. Um, so generally, that is what you want to do in those situations. Yeah, I'm sorry Mr. X wasn't better here. Like I said, if you look up uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake speedrun dodging Mr. X on YouTube, I believe there's a video from someone who did it pretty early on. I do need to note this hallway because it's pretty scary. I really YOLO'd this hallway and had... After, after what happened with Mr. X, I was like, this hallway can be scary. You know what? I'm YOLOing it. I had like the perfect God Gamer moment right there where I was like, okay, the guy's behind me. He's grabbing me. I need to be in the perfect distance to him. And I knew I needed to shoot the third zombie I ran into because I was like, there's no way that guy's not grabbing me. And I somehow managed to dodge the, um, the first one too. So that was a very good hallway. It's called the hallway of doom because a lot of runs die in that hallway. But as we come back downstairs, dogs are free and we don't have to worry about them. As you can see, they have terrible aim. 
And we're gonna go back here and we're gonna go solve the electric puzzle. Um, the Again, puzzles for speedrunning, you do need to memorize them to a degree. I had it in my notes, which you can see me looking at over there on my other monitor. I'm like, okay, fuck, what is the solution to the puzzle? I don't remember. Um, yeah, I can remember it off the top of my head, but it's weird. The fastest way to do this is you wanna X, go to examine, and then you just mash X after you've examined and turn it. You do wanna turn it this, uh, this direction because it is faster to the right. Um, and then you just slam it in. Then it, I believe it's, yeah, you hit that one, it's once, twice, three times for the one below it, once to the right, down one, the one right there that I turned at the last minute is two, and then the bottom three, you move to the left and do one. That solution will be written down in my notes, don't worry about it. I fucked it up there, that was a very slow puzzle. Um, I think I was nervous after getting hit and all this different stuff. Note that there is a first aid spray down in that corner. I decide to grab it because I'm like, hey, I have the pussy pouch and I'll be able to save myself later. Grab the parking permit, shoot the zombie in the head, and then afterward you want to throw your flashbang. And the reason you want to do that is it stuns all zombies and Mr. X. Screw you, buddy. I do not appreciate all the shenanigans, so you can punch it the air over there and then get hit by a car. Because I'm not putting up with your shenanigans anymore. It was, it's a shame because if you look at my time here, um, for context on splits, if you're not familiar with splits as we put in the uh, permit there, we're, we're going to be doing a bit of walking with Ada. Uh, the way this works essentially is if I'm on a green split, it means I save time compared to the last run, which are the splits I'm running against, my last personal best. And the red splits mean that I'm losing time. The light red means that I save time, but I'm still losing time. If you see a gold split, that means that's the fastest I've ever completed that segment. So if I were to get a gold split on LOL really, it would mean it's the fastest time from the moment I put in the parking permit and split to uh, the end of killing the gator who's coming up, which is um, not spooky in the speed run, but I'm not gonna lie. I've gotten eaten by the gator before, so you definitely can't go completely on autopilot. Um, I'll talk about that when we get there. But yeah, overall, I mean, that was generally fine. Um, obviously, you can see in the first 25 minutes of this run how things can go a little bit awry. Mr. X being at that door and walking out the door is extremely unlucky. That's never happened to me in any other run, uh, so... You just have random happenstance like some like that sometimes and you just got to deal with it as best you can Sometimes it'll end your run um, the, the nice thing about starting up speedrunning is generally your times in the beginning will be um, Slow enough that you don't have to reset over every little thing and to be honest Even though I'm at a point here where my in-game time was 10107 is the PB I'm running against my time was good enough that or, or sorry still still had enough room for improvement that these kind of things didn't end the run for me once you get a really good time these kind of things do end the run which is which is where speedrunning gets to the point where do i want to continue doing this run and get the best time i possibly can and grind it out or do i want to just move to another speed run typically that's what i do i move to another speed run because i'm like okay i got this under an hour i'm about uh five and a half six minutes off the world record i'm like i could keep grinding my time optimizing my movement you know keep fighting to see do more runs to see if i can avoid these RNG factors and get like, you know, the perfect RPD and those things can be fun because they put pressure on you where you're like Oh my god, I got the perfect time in the RPD. Okay. Now the sewer has to go amazing and the sewer is an absolute shit show So good luck with that, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there and I'm gonna show you how to get through the sewer as uh, Less dangerous as possible as least dangerous y Yeah, anyway, let's uh, let's go. Let's go fight the gator my uh, my favorite boss not not true, but I did make a Resident Evil 2 boss ranking. If, if you found your way here and you haven't seen the boss ranking, check it out. It's fun. I love this game, and I love talking about bosses. Anyway, uh, the moment the fight starts, you want to move to the left and just run against the wall on the left. Then wait until he bites, move to the wall on the right. He's going to bite twice here. That's how I've died. Sometimes I move left too quick, and you'll actually run into his mouth and eat you, so don't do that. Uh, run to the left side. That one's pretty quick, but it, it's really not that dangerous. And then you can just run in the center here, and you're golden. Um, I've seen other runners have their aim exactly on the canister as they pull up their aim. It doesn't happen for me. I don't know why. Pull up, shoot him. Uh, grab the grenade that's there on the floor. And then I, uh, if you care about what's happening with my splits, because um, I think, yeah, I lose a little bit of time here. I wait until Leon says, chew on that, you overgrown son of a bitch. I love Leon and Claire's dialogue so much in this. Leon is just like a sassy dude on his first day who's just had enough of this. And Claire is just like, local woman shouts expletives at zombies while tearing them to shreds. I, tr I truly love it. It's, it's a very, very good time. 
I actually never noticed that there's a, just a hunk of alligator there. Um, but I'm looking around because at this at this point, you can't really do anything as far as I know to speed this up, which I have to say this is another one of my favorite lines. Monsters, not reptiles, turn into zombies, even though we fought zombie dogs just beforehand. Oh, Leon. Oh, Leon. Um, this is my first Resident Evil game, actually, uh, which which is why you, you should be very impressed. I'm flexing my EP in here. You should be very impressed that I got a sub one hour. I'm being sarcastic for those who might think I'm being serious. Um, uh, yeah, I've, I've put probably like 30 hours total into this game, so to get this time, I was I was very, very pleased. Um, and I've already played Resident Evil 3 Remake. As you see this video going up, it should be going up before uh, my Resident Evil 3 Remake boss ranking, but that's coming. That'll probably be up two or three days after this video. And then uh, I asked the comments on the Resident Evil 2 boss ranking what to play, and they all were very, very uh, hot and recommending 4, because I said I wanted to see more of Leon's character, and they're like, dude, 4, 4, play fucking 4, make a boss ranking, do it, please. Uh, I'm doing it, I'm playing 4, I think I'm also going to play 1, I bought the remaster, I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to play 1 first, I think I'm going to play 4 after that, and then I'll go from there, because I know there's a lot more Resident Evil, but obviously I don't want to commit to doing too much too soon. Um... I think at the least, though, I probably will want to play 7, because I heard 5 is pretty questionable, I heard 6 is extremely questionable, and then 7 is like a really good return to form for the series, and I think as I'm making this, I actually was looking um, on Twitter, and I think I saw like a rumor that Resident Evil 8 is coming in 2021, and is going to be a big departure for the series, so, you know, be, be, be ready for that. Um, anyway, so it's secret weapon time, everybody. I'm sorry, I've been talking over secret weapon time. How fucking dare I? Uh, you you want to go and just basically we're trying to do these things as fast as possible. It really is just watching where I go to do these things. Note there that I used the thing to open the door before I jumped down. We're still stair skating with Ada. It also makes her faster. I'm just cutting corners as best I can here to move um, as efficiently as I possibly can. We're just going to go to the back because what you need to do in this section is go all the way to this back area and then you'll find uh, way back in the wall here is the one you want to get. Get it, hit it, quick turn, get out of there before that zombie gets up. And then the only zombie we actually have to shoot in this section, if you're quick about it like I have been so far, is this guy. Um, depending on how fast you are, he'll be coming around that corner. Um, don't have aim as terrible as I do. I really have bad aim. I can't overemphasize how bad my aim is. Um on controller it's bad on pc too i mean if you saw my doom eternal video um yeah yeah <laughs> which i guess this is the most random time to say it i'm also working on the commune uh community doom boss ranking uh for difficulty and that that was an interesting one people definitely were uh divisive uh, to say the least on my quality ranking they, they did not like how hard i shit on the marauder which, which to be fair i think i think i went a little hard on the marauder i do think he's a problem but uh yeah that he maybe is not as he's not as quite as harsh as i made him out to be i don't take any of my criticisms back but maybe i could highlight his good parts too anyway this is a resident evil video so how dare i talk about doom eternal um it's just honestly ada's section is really boring like i don't like her section very much i, I was I, I it's not her character i like her character fine i'm intrigued by her character and i want to see where her character goes as well uh, assuming she's alive because she throws you the rocket launcher at the end of the game um some, something's up with her i don't know what don't spoil me damn it in the comments please but uh yeah i'm curious to see i'm pretty sure she returns in re4 as well so i'll, I'll be finding out soon enough Anyway, you go pull the lever, we're gonna go here, we're gonna shoot Annette, because... I, I actually... Is, sometimes when I watch other people's speedruns to take my notes and prepare for these runs, which is what I do, um, I'll watch maybe... Usually I don't watch the world record run, usually I watch um, someone who's more similar to a time I'm going for, and then follow up by watching the record run. Um, yeah, every speedrunner shoots Annette. I don't know if that's just a... Uh, blowing their load on Annette's face kind of thing, or if that's like, a, this goes faster if you're out of bullets, but I don't question the speedrunners, man. I just, I am, a, I was gonna say a flamingo. I don't think flamingos copy people. Parrots copy what people say. Isn't there a bird that copies what people do? I think I'm really wrong. I'm just gonna, I, I think I'm just incorrect and I'm just gonna stop this inquiry. Anyway, uh, you just do the things in the order that I did there. But bada bing, bada boom, secret weapon time is about to be over, thank God. And we're going to be back to Leon as soon as we go through this door, go around the corner, get on the bridge. And then I honestly <laughs> feel bad. I don't even remember what happens to Ada here. I think she gets she gets captured, but I don't really know how or really remember because um, I always skip the cutscenes. because you in theory, you could watch them, but you, you really don't need to. Um, it would make each run very much longer <laughs> to watch them. 
Um, anyway, quick turn with Leon there, get to that elevator. I always do a terrible job at it, but you can actually quick turn straight to the lift and go up it, which would be faster, um, which is important in a speed run. But anyway, uh, go down the stairs, and then we're going to go through the sewers here. The sewers... From what I understand, an early Resident Evil 2 running were actually a really reset heavy place, but I generally find that despite some RNG that can be inconvenient, the sewers are rather consistent. Emphasis on rather consistent. They're not entirely consistent, but they're consistent enough. Anyway, do a little Yui here, go up the stairs, stair skate. Uh, if this guy's staring at the wall like this, he's generally free. You don't got to worry about him. He just uh, turns over there. You do want to shoot this guy in the head, though, because if he will grab you as you walk past him. So spot that guy in the head, go down the stairs, and then we're going to move into the uh, rest of the sewer and go down a little slip and slide. This slip and slide reminds me of uh, the depths in Dark Souls because there's something very similar down there. Can't take any t opportunity to not talk about Dark Souls. I love Dark Souls, guys. That's not a that's not a slight of Dark Souls, but I have talked about it a lot on this channel. I don't think it's too necessary to talk about it anymore at the moment. Uh, what we do need to talk about is what I like to call the poop monsters. Apparently, these are called G adults, but I just call them poop monsters. Uh, you want to shoot the poop monster in the head, and the reason you do that is because when you shoot the poop monster in the head from afar like that, he always does the animation where he hops up and he won't do an attack, and you do not want them to attack because if you thought Mr. X grabbed through time and space to grab me in the reception hall, uh, they can grab through time, space, wormholes, I don't know what. Their grab radius is absolutely bonkers, and getting grabbed by them is very... Uh, detrimental because if you get grabbed by them your only way to interrupt the grab is through using a sub weapon which we are very particular about how many sub weapons we have in this run um, and if you don't use a sub weapon they don't hurt you but they do poison you and if you're poisoned you move slow as hell so actually I think in the PB uh, that I'm running against here in the chess grandmaster split I think I actually did get poisoned by uh, one of the G adults or I'm, I'm gonna call them poop monsters I like calling the poop monsters so enjoy my uh, toilet seven-year-old humor. Anyway, uh, go out around here, grab the T-bar. I'm sorry I'm not like saying every th single thing you need to grab because if, if you're familiar with the game and read my notes, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I It's more important to know strategies and areas that can be troublesome like this one. If that guy is facing you on the stairs, you need to shoot him. I can't overemphasize that. You need to shoot him. That guy there also, if you are not fast getting down that stairs, he will move to the right enough that he will almost certainly grab you. But the thing that is can be difficult is if you run past the first guy, stopping to shoot him if you're not quick enough can be a little difficult, and then he grabs you, and then it's rough. What you can do there is you can actually tur turn around and shoot them in one of them, uh, shoot one of their legs off to make going back through there easier. Make sure you hug the left side so you don't get fussed by the G-Adult there. I've actually never been hit by him like that, so that was very weird. Maybe I didn't hug the left enough. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to go back through that area, so shooting the leg off of one of those zombies can be nice. Um, I go back and grab that grenade. That's actually a safety grenade. You don't technically need that grenade for this run, but I grab it because if I get grabbed by a G adult, it gives me the opportunity to shove a grenade in its mouth rather than getting toxic, which is sl is slow, but not as slow as getting toxic. So nice. Anyway, go up the lift after using the T bar. Grab the hip pouch. We're gonna grab the rook here because we uh, we couldn't take it before because it actually. Um, raises that bridge and we need to get across the bridge, of course. We're going to grab the ammo here. You're going to see that I'm actually shooting out some bullets. The reason I do that is because the 12 bullets in your gun are not in your inventory. Those other three bullets are, and inventory management is key. Uh, do the same thing again. We just hop down, shoot the G adult, walk past him. Oh, excuse me, poop monster. And uh, these guys are just vibing. They're just staring over here. Uh, fortunately, I know they generally turn slow. Don't bank on that. Sometimes they'll turn quick and grab for you. It's It, it truly is random a, a bit, but as you run, you get a little bit more comfortable with how zombies behave, and you can tell... Uh, like I have a chance to get by this basically that's that's what I did in the library with the lady who grabbed me I was like this is a pretty risky one, but she's looking straight at me She's probably gonna grab me, but you know what? I'm gonna go for it um, And sometimes you're punished for that sometimes you're not in that case I ran past them and I was like I think they're gonna turn to the left to look at me before they grab and I think I'll be fast enough to go around and I was Okay, so here the this is the other G adult I, I, I guess I'm just you know what? I'm just a normie now. They're G adults now the poop monster dungeon is very scary. 
you need to go around the corner, you need to shoot this guy, but what you wanna do, you'll notice that I shoot them from afar, the reason I do that is because if you get too close when you shoot them, they'll stun you as they do their animation to get up long enough that they'll 100% grab you. You wanna stick to the right there to get away from that guy, generally he does not grab you, I think you can actually shoot him to make him go um, down the toilet, uh, by that I mean down into the toilet water or the sewer water, but I've only been grabbed by him like once, so I generally don't. Uh, and, then, and then we're in the next area where we have the king and queen chess pieces, but we also need to grab the flamethrower. In the 120 FPS run, the knife is good enough that you don't need the flamethrower to fight the uh, G3, but in this run we do need it because it does enough damage. So this is going to be pretty quick. I grab the queen, stick it in there, uh, grab the king up here. And then we're going to jump down. We're going to run past the zombie, I think, to grab the queen, but you actually don't need to yet because you need this door open to put the king in, get the flamethrower. I recommend putting the flamethrower toward the bottom of your inventory. You don't really want a double thing um, up at the top. And then you need to come back around and shoot that zombie. He is also random, as all zombies are. He, a lot of times he's very passive. That time he really was swiggity swooty on that booty and followed me to the point where he bit me, which obviously is not ideal, but... Oh well. Um, go back here, we're putting the king in, or queen, excuse me, in. We'll put the king in the slot to the left, go back around, grab the queen, and then get out. Um, I could, like I said, describe every little bit of it, but generally just watch wh which order I'm putting things in and where. You'll also notice that in my inventory I moved it so the king and queen are in good spots, and you're going to notice some excellent movement here, some excellent corner cutting. Good lord. Um... Things like that. I mean, that's probably like a 7-8 second time loss just to moving around a corner bad. There are optimizations to be made. We'll, we'll just put it that way. But again, I'm very happy with this run. So this is the scariest part to me. You can actually come around this corner and have one of the poop monsters be standing there staring at you. If he is, you want to shoot him and just carry on about your business and hopefully he goes down the toilet. Uh, fortunately, the, the, the poop monsters over there just kind of moved to the right, so they got out of my way, which they were they were respecting the run, and considering some of the RNG I got earlier, I was like, okay, I'll take that. Thank you, game. Now, you want to go here. You want to wait a second. Uh, you, you get this guy baited out and come up here. I have had issues with this. He, it seems as if his uh, box is kind of like blocking you from going down. What I've seen runners do here is aim down to the right corner, and it lets them jump down in that narrow little spot I was able to jump down there. I obviously did it very slow. Um, for that one, because I don't understand that part as well, I do recommend watching other runs and maybe seeing the tech that they use for that if you really want to get uh, you know, optimized times. He will eventually let you pass like he did for me there, but obviously you lose a little, a little bit of time. So again, those zombies are staring. There is an old fatty who got up behind you, so just watch out for him. Generally, he won't grab you. It just depends on where they are. The sort of cluster between the three of them all, you know, collapsing on you at once can definitely cause you to get bitten sometimes there, which is why shooting that leg off I mentioned earlier can be valuable. So as we come through here, uh, now we need to go to the puzzle. If you want a safety strat early on, this is a great time to put the spade and club key away in that chest if you want to grab more healing at any point, um, if you feel like you need it for safety. I will actually mention how we do this because it's pretty quick. The queen should be at my first slot, so I slap it in there. You get the king in, you grab the knight, you slot the rook, I slot the knight, and then I slot the bishop that I took um, to be able to place the king. Uh, it's Again, you you get the puzzles, you get, you get pretty quick with them. And as you can see, I saved a lot of time here. The reason for that is that, like I said, I, I think I got poisoned in my PB, and even just walking back with poison all that way is significant. Though I will note, you'll see, I just passed something on the ground I could have picked up. That was actually a blue herb. I pick up the green herb to get back to fine. You actually get a red one in here, so you can make a red, green, blue here if you want, which is a great, or, which is a great safety strat early on. So one, two, four is what we want to do here. And then there actually is a strategy here we need to pay attention to. You'll notice I equip the grenade. What we're going to do, as he reaches down, toss the grenade over to the other side of the room. And this manipulates his AI. I'm not ent entirely sure why it works this way. But if you throw the grenade like that, you need to just make sure the grenade doesn't blow up too... Um, it needs to blow up generally close to when he appears as you back close to the door. It makes it so he immediately goes to the sheet door. Otherwise, normally in this section, you have to deal with him fisting you through the roof for a while, which it's just slow. If we have a way to avoid it, we'd obviously like to, um, and it leaves more margin for error. If you're quick enough there, if you cut the corners fine, he shouldn't hit you there. We hit the button. This is going to be pretty specific. So we're going to turn around and we're going to use the flamethrower. If you're not fast enough, he will jump at you. If you are fast enough, he's just going to go down. Once he does, we're going to take out the knife. 
this knife should be almost broken. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the knife until it breaks. Once the knife breaks, we're gonna turn around, we're gonna hit the crate, we're gonna grab the flashbang and the knife that is right here, and then we're gonna move to the spot where the ammo is, grab the ammo, and start flaming him. As we do, he's gonna run toward us, we're gonna turn around, and we're gonna watch this bitch get hit. Uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty sweet like this fight can be really rough in a casual playthrough because of the amount of space You have on here like there were a couple people surpri uh, surprised in my ranking I didn't rank them lower just because of that and it is a very detrimental part of that fight um, But do doing it like that is very satisfying The one thing I will note is if you're playing this on a normal ps4 or xbox and you're not getting 60 frames the knife is doing less damage that strategy might not work. You might need to alter things and instead use more of the flamethrower to damage him. Um, I would just test it for yourself. The The nice thing about Resident Evil 2 is there's an ingrained way in the game to save at the um, typewriter that's back there. And then you're able to just make a save right before the boss, test it, see how it works. And as far as practice goes, generally I found that doing runs was the most important thing. Like just, you know, optimizing the movement, stringing everything together. But practicing the boss fights actually is pretty important. So I do recommend on your first run that you make a save for each boss because it'll be very valuable. Uh, because the last thing you want to do is, you know, be on a really good run, have that good RNG, and then you choke on a boss. So... You'll notice here that after I grab the ammo from him, I'm shooting away. It's for the same reason as before. I only want 12 bullets. I don't need that much pistol ammo, so there's no reason to keep it in my inventory. Um, so just shooting out some bullets. You'll notice that I have 15 here. I'm actually gonna shoot away a few more when I get to the doors because basically what we're, what we're trying to do is get rid of ammo, but we're looking for times where the game, we essentially can't progress forward, like being in the cable car there and at these doors that are slow. It's a perfect time for me to shoot things away. I keep one bullet, and the reason I do that is I know that I'm going to use it here in a uh, in a second, so it's um, you know a good time to just save, I guess, one extra bullet because you you do need bullets for this next part. You just don't need that many. Uh, it depends on your aim, which, as you've seen throughout this run, I have excellent aim, so clearly I don't need that many bullets. So I'm actually going to shoot the blue shot spot here. I'll tell you why in a moment. But we're going to turn right and grab this grenade. This is also a safety grenade. You don't technically need this grenade, but I grab it anyway. And it's not very significant time-wise, so I see no reason not to. Um, it, then I grab the fuel there. You definitely want that. Reload the flamethrower. And as you can see, I got a hefty amount of it. We're going to use it for G3, so that's very important. Then uh, reload my gun here. Now I don't have any ammo in my inventory. We're gonna go ahead and jump down. And then you need to be careful because there is a zombie in this room. I turn right and notice that he's right there. Uh, you wanna grab the level two ID, merge it with your wristband, and then we're gonna grab the upgrade for the flamethrower here. No reason not to, because it's right here. So just grab that, combine it. Then as the door opens, be wary of the zombie. He will grab you. Um, the reason we shoot the blue there, it's similar to the manipulation outside of the library. What we're trying to do is sometimes, it's pretty rare, but if you shoot the blue, sometimes he'll just be staring at the door when you come out. He'll be staring at that blue door. And if he is, you can just run to his right side straight past him, which saves time. It just saves time to not have to stop for a second and uh, have to shoot him. And obviously, any opportunity for you to not get grabbed is ideal because that means losing health and it means losing time. As I've said many a time throughout this run, but we're actually nearing the end here. Yeah, the, uh, this section is so cool. Um, you know, in the boss rankings, I don't get time to like really dig into every single bit of the game that I love, but I really do love RPD. I think RPD is one of the better designed levels I've played in any game recently. I adore the RPD. Um, the sewers, obviously, uh, I feel like I've heard from the original game, they got flushed out quite a bit. Uh, even though the, I, I think the poop monsters are really what people hate. They just put some very annoying enemies down there. Um, this area does have some scary enemies too. I call them clickers. Uh, after The Last of Us. Maybe maybe that's actually what they're called. I, I, I don't know, actually. But uh, I love the design of the Nest Laboratory. It's so cool. It's so futuristic. I love, like, the decay in the, like, uh, in the herbology lab or laboratorium or greenhouse or whatever you want to call it. Um, so once we come in here, we're going to grab that flash grenade. You, you don't need to worry about that clicker getting up. You, you can just walk right past him. We want to put the two codes in right away, um, like the cheaters we are. That way we get everything that we need open. Uh, and then we're going to turn around and grab the 
Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the thing we're going to use to make the solution to kill all the clickers, or at least most of them. Some of them survive because why not? Dispersal cartridge. There we go. So flashbang, put the codes in, grab the dispersal cartridge, skip the cutscene, and then we're going to go skate down toward the lab. I checked my notes there, but it really is easy. Um, it's pretty surprising how easy it is. Uh, it's just red, green, blue. That's it. Red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green and that gets it for you so uh you can it's eight movements but just remember red green blue and keep hitting in that order and that gives you the answer i believe that's the fastest way to do it i don't think that's done specifically because it's easy to remember um in my pb i actually messed it up because i didn't push over fast enough and i was like mashing x like a dum dum, and i somehow rallied it because i obviously still got a decent time but yeah, you're going to put that code in, grab it. Then when we come out here, you can get past this guy sometimes, but I really recommend the way to deal with these is with your pistol, which is why I said we needed ammo. You want to shoot any of the orange spots that will stun them long enough that you can get past them. It's effectively like shooting a zombie in the head. So that's what you need your pistol ammo for. I'm going to go ahead and equip my grenades here uh, because I'm going to throw a grenade, just get into the cafeteria, throw it over where those zombies are. That will kill those zombies because we are now in the liquor labs, ladies and gentlemen, and that is the scariest area of the run. The reason I look up at the ceiling here is I genuinely or generally find it lets me get past that liquor. What I want to note is you want to be following your feet on the blue line that's on the floor. You do not want to be entirely hugging the wall. If you hug the wall completely, you will get licked by the liquor almost all the time. So you want to be very close to the wall, but not quite on it. I use the ceiling to track where I am. I also move over. You want to move over to the left once you reach the hole in the ceiling. Um, anyway, to note here, we're going up the stairs. We're grabbing the electronic device, and we're going to throw a flash grenade. That will just get rid of these zombies using quick turns and stair skating here to just get down as fast as possible. You'll actually kind of like just skate through the zombies most of the time, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then this is one of the two parts that is going to be very scary. I'm turning my device to Murph. As you can tell, I'm not very fast at it. There are specific movements you can do. I think it only takes four moves to actually Murph. So do the four move Murph. Don't be like me and don't learn and just do it slow because this is this is a speed run. Anyway, you want to walk past them. I threw a bad grenade, so I did not kill the zombie. So uh, you want to turn around, throw the flash. Hopefully you do it in time. The reason we throw the flash there is because if one of the liquors is on the ceiling, which is pretty common, the flash will actually stun them for about 10 seconds, which is ideal. You typically want to grab that herb because the liquor lab is scary. As you're about to see again, I'm going to get hit. So this was not a good liquor lab. Freaking flying over there like a flying squirrel, man. Uh, the liquor labs are scary. You definitely want the zombie to be dead. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that safety grenade I had because you only need one grenade for G3 and there's another place to grab it. I'm actually going to throw the grenade as I come out because the last thing I want to happen is to be grabbed by a zombie and then have the liquors on top of me as well. It's pretty rare that the zombie will be alive. I guess I just arced the grenade poorly. Um, I think I've had two runs where the, the one of the zombies lived. Obviously he's he took damage because he looked like he was burnt, but it is what it is. Anyway, we go in here, we cool the solution, the solution is now ready. I take a diagonal line over here, but I, yeah, I guess the, the grenade hit the ceiling there. I don't even I don't even kill the zombie, but fortunately he's not too aggressive. I just cut a reasonably uh, straight line there. I just saw my fiance pass through to the bedroom in the footage. Hi, Dana, if you're watching. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go up here, and then you just need to be careful as you look. Um, I survived the liquor lab. Feels good, man. Just uh, the, the reason I also grabbed the grenade, be, be careful of the clickers when they come up here. The reason I grabbed the grenade is if a liquor is, uh, does grab you, they have a grab, you can actually cancel it with a grenade, which will obviously stun them too. So that's the main reason I grabbed the safety grenade, uh, just a note. You go in here, you put in the solution. Now we need to go back out. This uh, The whole point of this section is there's a guy on the glass to our right that has the level three bracelet and that we need that. Um, note that there is a blue herb right there. That herb can be combined with in the lobby of this area where the um, typewriter in the box is, there is a green herb on the counter. You can combine that with the green herb and then there'll be a red herb in the area where you grab the G-Virus to the right. Um, so you could make a red, green, blue again. 
if you just take your time and kind of look around these areas as you do your first run, you'll start to note where you can go out of your way a bit to get healing. Obviously, I'm at the point where my time is good enough that I don't want to be doing too much stuff like that. And even though the beginning of my run was bad, I seem to be doing very good here. There's the green herb I noted, which I am going to grab the green herb. I'm not going to get to the point where I have... Um, I use it very slowly there, but I'm not going to bother to make the, you know, full thing. I want to be on good time. But in the beginning of your runs, I totally recommend it because it can make a huge difference, not only in terms of having healing to make sure you don't die, but the red, green, blue can make a difference in boss fights where if you get hit, you can heal. And then you'll also have slight damage resist, which is valuable when you're still learning the fights. Though, like I mentioned, I do very much recommend practicing them because I would think that made some of the biggest difference for me. The thing that really did improve my time was uh, threefold. Getting better at stair skating, taking straighter lines. I haven't mentioned that since the beginning. This is the grenade you can grab for G3. Just make sure you have that one. Then we need to switch our thing to OSS. I think it's actually only two required moves. Yeah. Um, I get that one fast like uh, like an actual speedrunner, which is good. Um <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, we're just going to turn around here. We're going to go grab the G-Virus, and then we're going to fight G3, which is uh, pushing us toward the end of the game. This is a very quick run. Um, I think my first run that I completed was around, I want to say like 121, 122 in game time. Um, once you get all these things memorized, it, it goes quick, which um, I mentioned before. Yeah, stair skating, fast lines, and learning the boss battles really was the, uh, the the three things. I didn't mention the lines much since the beginning, but um, as I'm playing this, I'm consciously trying to take the least amount of steps possible. That's the easiest way to think of it: is you want to take the least amount of steps possible to the end of the game. So just take clean, take clean lines. Can't overemphasize. Anyway, let's do G3. So the moment the fight starts, you want your flamethrower out. You want your grenade equipped. There is actually a manipulation you can do here. I'm not the best at getting it. Um, if you go around him, he'll actually slap that wall, and then you can, if you stay close to him, he'll jump backward. Um, you can watch another run for that. I don't get that here. He jumps back, which is probably the worst RNG you can get because you it makes it less likely, in my experience, that he's going to jump again. I get attacks here. You note that I am moving intentionally back toward this area. That's because there's more fuel here, and you do need it to kill him. So... He's not giving me the best fight. He's He ran to an area where I couldn't as easily hit him from where I was grabbing the ammo. Pretty inconvenient, but we're moving along in the fight pretty well. Most of the time after he does this roar, he'll jump at you, which is ideal, but he doesn't jump at me here, which sucks. The reason jumping at you is ideal is you can actually run under his jump, which is very convenient, and that's a good time to reload because you do need to reload at some point. When he turns into phase three or whatever, when he roars that time, you do want to throw the grenade at him. If you throw it at the right time after the roar, it can actually stun him. The reason you want to do that is because you really don't want him grabbing that thing. Um, he's actually, he's not invincible, I believe. You can do damage to him still, but he cannot die while he's doing that, which obviously is not ideal. That was a pretty mediocre fight. I got hit. Um, he really didn't move in a way that was ideal. You're going to have that in speedruns. You're going to have times where you have to just rally and say, okay, this isn't going as scripted. Fair enough. Let me, you know, rally and do it as best as I can. And fortunately, I rallied there and, and did it fairly well. But I do recommend watching, uh, you can watch the world record for the console. I, I recommend watching the console route. I would, this would technically be the PC 60 FPS category, but I ran this as if I was running it on a console since I'm using controller. And as I mentioned, I want it to be more um, accessible to everybody. So any anyone can play this essentially. Anyone who can buy Resident Evil on a place, to, on a place that has it uh, is able to play. So now we're in the final stretch. We're going down the elevator, and I decided to take the scenic route, which is staring straight at the f the frickin' wall. Uh, I guess I'm tr tr try to tone down the expletives, you know. I'm a f I'm a very f I'm yeah, yeah, yeah I'm just gonna stop this line of thought. Anyway, uh, now now you get to see the pretty thing, uh, the the little generators you're going down. And uh, this next room at the bottom actually has two very useful items, um, very forgiving items, uh, and I'm going to grab both. One is, as, you, as soon as you exit the elevator to the right, there's first aid spray, which, uh, for those who might not know, is a full heal. You don't need to make anything. It's just straight up a full heal. No damage resist like a red, green, blue, but it is a full heal. Uh, and green, red is also a full heal, just a note. You don't need blue. Blue gives you the damage resist. The other item is the knife here. And the reason I grab that is we're going to be going past some clickers, and in the off chance they grab me, I do not want them to take my knife because I need the knife for the tyrant fight. 
Uh, the knife is all we're going to use for the super tyrant. So yeah. I want to shoot the wall there and shoot that canister there. The reason we do that is that can actually, again, manipulate AI. You'll note here, this guy actually comes toward me, so I'm going to shoot to be safe. Normally, he'll look at the wall if you shoot there, which is very convenient. This guy's questionable as hell. Um, I honestly am surprised I didn't just try to shoot him. The reason I didn't is because of the way he was facing was a bit awkward. Green herb you can grab there. But generally, you, you typically want to shoot him um, so you don't get grabbed. Uh, as you come down here, the tyrant is going to drop in one last time. Same concept as when he picked up the elevator. Stick to the right, aim at him, wait until he moves, and then move uh, slightly left and mostly forward, and you'll just go right past him. There, there are multiple ways to actually handle that, I believe, but that's the way this works most, most consistently for me. So, very, very nice. Uh, skip this cutscene, then we're going to go through the door. There is a red herb here, so if you grab the green one before that was at the top of the ladder, you can actually make a red green, as, which, as I mentioned, is a full heal. But I'm going to go straight into it um, and use a spark plug. Now, I'm also going to admit that uh, <laughs> I've practiced the Super Tyrant a bit. I've practiced for maybe 30, 40 minutes. Um, he is definitely my worst fight. But the idea here is you need to get him stunned three times because when you do that, the rocks will start to fall. And once the rocks start to fall... Uh, it sets a timer basically for when Ada is going to throw you the launcher. I believe it's about a minute after the rocks fall. Um, so what I'm doing here is kind of like G1. I'm staying hooked to his uh, hip. And the reason I'm doing that is because generally, as you saw, it will allow you to avoid some of his attacks. But truly, I because I'm not as good at this, you may need to do what I did, which is I watched about 10, 15 different speedruns to see how they handled it. And everyone's strategies are a little bit different. Uh, shout out to Ron Bonbon bon on Twitch while I was practicing this before the, uh, this run in this stream. Um, I actually found what works most consistently for me is this, is uh, holding the knife out. My fight with him here is actually pretty bad. It is very, uh, is very sketchy. But I found that generally staying in the knife, the knife position does okay for me because I don't get hit as much when I'm knifing him in the beginning. I have a very just bad fight with him here. Again, I wish I had a better... Um, the tyrant in this run just was truly a tyrant, wasn't he? Mr. X, man. Uh, he, he beat me up pretty good, but if you do a good fight, I think it's around about 620, 630 um, that it'll get it. This is his insta-kill attack. You don't have enough pistol ammo here to avoid it, so you better have a rock to do it, because otherwise you are screwed. Um, that comes there. Same concept here as dodging him in the early game. I get my fingers crossed and don't do it. Pull out the rocket launcher, shoot him from point-blank range, take absolutely no damage for whatever reason that is a thing. Um, and then we're just going to shoot the zombies at the end and run to the end. Um, yeah, what you want to do there is, like I said before, you want to move forward. And once he starts to hit, you aim and move backward. And that'll just completely avoid the attack. Um, but yeah, you just shoot the zombies at the door. You go here. And I was very stoked because I knew 101. Um, I think it, it's about two minutes of real time is faster than the in-game time. So I, I knew that I was I, I had gotten the sub hour. I was very excited um, to get your actual time that you would be submitting if you wanted to submit it to the leaderboards on speedrun.com, which is where the Resident Evil speedrunning community is. And you can also join their discords for RE2 speedrunning and RE3 speedrunning and all that stuff. Um, you can submit these runs. I got 59.15, which I was very pleased with because uh, like my pre this was almost a two-minute improvement on the PB that I was running against. Um, and like I said, for 21 runs, I feel genuinely that this was um, very, very quick uh, progress. Yeah, shout out to other uh, uh, Twitch viewers, uh, Hot We Wesker Albert, which is a very nice Resident Evil reference, and uh, Shattered and Ryman, who were supporting pretty wildly throughout this stream. Um, if you want to check me out on Twitch, uh, I know like a lot of people who watch YouTube don't you know have the free time or necessarily want to watch Twitch. I am over there on Twitch TV Democracy, as you can uh, the the Democracy, as you can see, my hand is shaking there because I dude I was. So hyped. I get so excited when I speedrun, man. I, I can't tell you. You get this You get this level of adrenaline when you can complete these runs, um, which obviously makes you a little shaky, but it, it's good. It, it, it's good positivity, good positive feelings, which, which are something that's important right now. So hopefully hanging out with me and listening to the speedrun commentary was at least entertaining. If you don't want to speedrun it, I highly recommend trying out a speedrun for this game if you love Resident Evil and just want to challenge yourself to try something new because... 
I do genuinely think it is very accessible. I think the one um, thing that can be a little bit rough in the beginning is mem remembering everything. Um, in, my, in my first run, most of the reason I was slow is because I just forget where to go. The easiest way to handle that is just pause the game. The uh, speedrunning site does allow you to pause for up to two minutes. Obviously, don't be too liberal with that, but if you need to pause for a second, look at notes and see, oh, okay, I'm supposed to be going through the reception hall and getting the crank, or sorry, the jack, so I can go through the library to the clock tower, yada, yada. Um, that's fine to do in the beginning, and if you do enough runs, you'll remember it. Yeah, uh, you might see on here I flashed under the screen that I did an offline run, and I got a, uh, as you can see, very close to my sub one hour, so I can upload with the title, How to Beat Resident Evil in Under One Hour. Um, and you know what? I got punched by Mr. X at the end there, uh, as you're supposed to aim and, you know, juke his hit. I got punched by him, not once, not twice, three times, and I also got eaten by the crocodile in that run, so, uh, karma is a thing. I do my runs on stream. Uh, offline speedrunning is for practice, not for getting my, uh, my goal speedruns. The only reason that's ideal is then when it, they go up on YouTube, I can, um, I can upload them without having, you know, all my stream overlays on, which is nice, but hopefully my face isn't that distracting. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I uh, I hope to do another one of these for Claire. No promises, but I, I want to do her run. Her run is much more challenging because you need to be in caution the whole time, so I'm excited to try it out. And I would like to do Resident Evil 3 running as well, which looks very tough uh, to me to start because, uh, funny enough, you get a dodge, but now that means you need to dodge like everything. So yeah, it'll be fun. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Much love to you, and I will see you in the next video, which will be the Resident Evil 3 boss ranking, then Community Doom, and then maybe there will be something coming on Final Fantasy 7. Who knows? All right, guys. Much love, and I'll check you guys later. See ya.